This is part three of Reading Log 20. It's our last chapter of the book. It is our conclusion. So just add your last couple sentences to your Reading Log 20 on what you read today, which is present day world. Chapter 33 titled, Satisfaction Guaranteed or Your Money Cheerfully Refunded? Despite the special effects, I knew I hadn't gotten out of the game because I could still feel that Kendrick was still holding me. On the other hand, I was suddenly also feeling much better. I wasn't burning with a fever, my head didn't ache, and the inter internal fireworks had stopped. But I could also smell popcorn, which struck me in a vague, dis detached way as odd. Something, however, nearly Ow! Ripped the skin off my head at my temples, on either side of my neck, and on various other sides of my body. Got it! A female voice announced. I opened my eyes and saw that the Rasmussen receptionist was leaning over me, holding a bunch of wires with suction cups at the end. The wires that had formerly connected me to the Rasmussen computer. Are you here too? I asked thinking that somehow she had gotten sucked into the game. But then I realized I was in one of those um, rooms at Rasmussen, lying on a total immersion couch. Welcome back, honey, the receptionist said. How could they make it feel so real? I could still feel Kendrick's arms around me. The sensation was so vivid that I turned to look, and there was Kendrick still holding me. Yikes, I said, but without much energy because I was incredibly tired. The guy holding me smiled. <laughs> Same glorious smile, but his hair was shorter and he was wearing jeans with a Rasmussen Gaming Center shirt. And he was also the source of the popcorn aroma. He lowered my head back onto the couch's pillow. Tell me you're not Kendrick, I said. I'm not Kendrick, the guy said obligingly. I'm Nigel Rasmussen. No, no you're not. I was confused, but I wasn't that confused. I've seen Nigel Rasmussen. He's a short round guy with glasses. Yeah, that's my uncle David. I used his image to talk to you because I thought he looked more credible to you. I used my physical appearance for Kendrick. You certainly did. I considered for a few moments and then said, but you can't be more than he has. I hesitated and he supplied 16 years old. 16? Rasmussen Enterprises had been around for two years which meant he started his company when he was no older than I was now. I will probably not be starting my own company in the coming months. So what are you, some sort of computer genius? I asked. Well, you got to do something when your parents saddle you with a name like Nigel. Wow, and you came here because I was in trouble? Nigel Rasmussen shook his head. Rochester, New York is world headquarters for Rasmussen Enterprises. My own parents regulate how much time I can spend on computers, so I work here after school and on weekends. He added, though I had guessed a moment before, he said it at the concession stand. The receptionist said, sit her up. At first, I resented her speaking as though I was totally helpless, but I was totally helpless. Nigel did most of the work getting me into a sitting position. The receptionist handed me a cup of water. You're fine, she assured me. You might be a bit disoriented at first, but that will pass. It wasn't like this the other times I played, I said, worried despite her calming words. The other times you played, there would have been a cool down period between the game stimulus and the waking state. Are you sure? I asked. This was, after all, the woman who compared games to soups. That's what they pay me for. 
I was reassured until she started speaking into someone who wasn't there, rattling off a bunch of numbers and techno jargon and then ending with signing off unless you say otherwise. Another voice said, you're fine. Then I heard a dial tone. The receptionist leaned over and touched something on the wall behind me and the speaker went off. Do you want to rest a bit, honey? She asked. I could dim the lights and put on some soft music. We called your grandmother, and she should be here soon. And of course, there will be a media circus waiting outside, so I really recommend the rest now. Please, yes, I said. And then maybe begging just a little bit, I asked Nigel. Can you stay a bit? He pulled over a chair while the receptionist dimmed the lights, put on the music, and then pulled the door shut behind her. I asked, she's a technician here? Actually, a total immersion technologist, as well as an emergency medical, she can stay, technician. Do you want to talk about what happened or do you want to sleep? Both, I admitted. We'll compromise. You lie down. Close your eyes. I did. May I? Nigel was leaning over and was holding my hand. Yes, 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 I wanted to shout. But I managed to refine. Mm-hmm. Nigel spoke in a quiet, soothing voice. You were in the game for 87 minutes, which normally would have been totally safe, except for the damage the CPOC people did. They're going to get their asses fried for endangering the welfare of a minor. But you did fine. Well, you did more than fine. You did... Was that admiration in his voice? You did things in that game that I didn't think could be done. Mm-hmm. I said again, pleased though I hardly knew the, the guy. Then his words sank in. My eyes flew open and I almost managed to sit up. You were watching me? I demanded. Geonine, he said. There were technicians on both coasts in, in, and in England, Japan, and the Ukraine following your readouts. Horrified, I asked. You could tell what I was thinking? Sounding just as horrified, he answered. No, uh, of course not. That's not the way the equipment works. Somebody reading someone's thoughts? He, sounded, he said it so contemptuously that I had to believe he was telling the truth. We couldn't even see or hear you. We were getting a steady stream of biofeedback statistics and data on how the characters and settings were changing, which led us to interpret what you were doing. Sort of like watching a solar eclipse, which you can't do with your bare eyes, so you cast an image with a lens, and that's what you see a reflection? Okay, I'll just have to take your word for it. What do you mean I did things other people didn't do? Wasn't I playing it right? Of course you were playing it right. You were just making, well, unusual choices. I was getting irritated. I said, all right, he was gorgeous and a 16-year-old genius who was a CEO of his own multinational company, but that didn't give him the right to mock me. Well, my choices made sense to me at the time. I didn't say they didn't make sense, he answered defensively. I settled back on the couch and closed my eyes once more, wondering if I was too rude to tell him I'd changed my mind and that he could go now and tend to his concession booth. It's just, Nigel said. Trusting Kendrick is almost always a bad choice. I kept thinking, no, 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 but you did, and twice. And the second time it worked out. Thank you for letting me be the good guy for once. I opened my eyes again. You, I meant to do that too. Kendrick helped me so much at the very end when I thought it was all over. Well, Air apparent is a game, Nigel said. It's supposed to be fr fun. Frustrating, sure, but fun. If a player starts crying, that's a signal something has gone wrong. 
the characters become much more helpful. It's what the programmers call a secret weapon. Oh. Well, Kendrick was nice before, just especially nice at the end. And I usually don't cry. It's only I was worn out. Nigel smiled. I could tell. That you don't usually cry? You were incredibly brave. And creative. And you were about to win when the equipment began overheating. I shuddered, remembering the fireworks, realizing how close I had come to not making it. Sometime, later, I might be able to ask what I had would have done if I wasn't, if it, what they would have done if it wasn't at the end of the game. What they would have done if I wasn't at the end of the game when the equipment started shorting out. But for the moment, that was too scary. So instead I asked, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Okay, what did I do differently from other people then? Nigel considered. I guess there are a lot of things he could... I guess there was a lot of things he could have chosen from when he said, well, most players give the ring to Sister Mary Ursula. But friend grimbled at his camp and get Zenius, Zenius Senior to take on the dragon rather than handling it personally. Oh my God, I wasn't even close. But your way worked, so it wasn't wrong. The receptionist slash technologist slash technician knocked softly on the door, then came in with a miniature dragon on its leash. It settled on the couch side table that held the pitcher of water, close but not close enough to nip. It opened its jaws, revealing many teeth and a tiny flame about the size you'd find on a match head right before it fizzles out. Your grandmother hasn't arrived yet, the receptionist said. But there's a man who claims he's your father. My father? My father had come here? She had apparently had demanded his driver's license, and now she showed it to me. And despite my amazement, amazement, I got my voice to work. Yeah, that's him. The receptionist said. And the second question is, do you want to see him? Well, he wasn't Dexter the peat cutter, but neither was he King Cedric. I braced myself. Sure, I told her. And I told the tiny dragon with the butterfly wings, your mother has bad breath even without the dead ox. Then I let Nigel help me sit up, though this time I really didn't need him. And I waited for my father. Oh, gosh, someone ripped it out. So on the last page is a sign that for um, protesters of CPOC that if you um, <clears throat> don't like, don't believe in fantasy or fantasy equals Satanism or whatever, that you cut it out and you put it on a board. But this book, someone cut it out. That's a shame. So that is our book, and as you know, a lot of it was based on some real experiences that our author, Vivian Van De Velde, had, had. And um, remember to send me those um, messages that I asked you to do this last week of school. Be safe, be healthy. I've enjoyed being your teacher during this quarantine time.